Hi everyone, it's Wendy. Um, I'm gonna, I was talking about showing how to do, how I do this double-sided mat. I think I have a video on it. If not, well, this will be the video. If I do, this will be an updated one. Um, I've been doing a rolled stitch for my hot pads which is a half double and I think I have a video on that I'll have to check and if not I'll have to make one um, but then I uh, had someone asked about larger pads and so I decided okay I'm gonna do a hot mat but I wanted them bigger and thicker um, this one's almost done but to be honest this I don't know if you can see this, um, but this hot mat, I call it a hot mat, is when I get it done about three eighths of an inch thick. Whereas my hot pads are probably about a quarter inch thick. So this is a lot, a little thicker. Um, I will tell you it does, it is a yarn eater. Um, because this one, which I will show you how to complete on, I use the Crafters Secret from Hobby Lobby, and these are two ounce balls, and as you can see, there's two of them. Um, <laughs> that's all I have left, and once I get done, it'll be a little less, and it turns out to be about seven inches by nine inches I mean I could make it a full ten inches if I wanted to but I'm not um, and you can make this any size you want now that's with the crafter secret um, today I'm going to use Premier and these balls have more on them I know they do well 2.1 ounces so I'll probably use almost all, all of this and these I think have 2.8 yep so there'll be some left of this which is fine because I'll use it for a wash a dishcloth um, maybe edge it in this if there's enough um, but I, I have a tendency to like cotton um, I prefer a hundred percent the premier is 85 15 which is good um, there's not enough of the polyester in there to cause any issues as far as melting in that. Uh, the other thing I use, I use, this is an H hook, um, five point millimeter or H hook. I Don't get me started. Depending upon, this is a boil, depending upon which manufacturer, their H hook can range anywhere from 4.75 to 5.25. Um, a G hook, you know, can range inside. It depends upon the manufacturer. Um, it would be very helpful if they would take and get their act together. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is find my centers. Hopefully, I won't have a lot of yarn burp. And some of them are easier to find than others, but if you can get, see, I'm, I'm trying to make sure I'm kind of right in the center center. I'm going to have yarn burp. That's all right. I'll use it. Um, when I have this issue, I try not to pull it completely out. I just kind of keep pulling and pulling but I'm gonna have yarn burp oh well <laughs> so I'm just gonna lay this to the side now when you're working with two balls of yarn now you could do this where it's the same on each color just realize you're gonna need four ounces of yarn and you could do it off the same ball using the inside and the outside 
ends. Um, but working with the balls, it's easier. And if you have one of those, what do they call them, yarn bowls, or you can use the old um, two liter bottle trick to keep them separated. They do get a little twisted, but I'll show you a neat little trick. Now I had I had less yarn burp with this, so I'm just gonna look there. Okay, now when I do, remember this is what I'm working on. When I do my hot pads, um, I chain 26 and start in the second chain from the hook. So these are 25 across, so they're about seven inches across, and um. And I do a count up. I'll have to do a updated video on that so you, you guys can see that. Now for um, my mats, um, for this pink one, I did, I chained 34, started the second one, so it's 33 across. But I'm going to do one that is 31 across. I just want to see what the size difference is. That originally is only going to be 9 inches but it turned into 10. So just be aware using this stitch um, it ends up being wider than you think. Um, so I have my slip knot, my H hook, and I am just going to chain 31 whoops, to 3, 4, 5, 6, I'm trying to go fast, that's why it's slipping. I could do 30 and that would be 29. No, nope. 31 would be 30. Okay. <laughs> now, using my grid here, um, if you look, my chain is approximately seven and a half inches. We'll see how wide that is. Now, um, I use American terms. So, and this is how I hold my yarn. This is how I hold my hook. I've seen people hold their hook way back here and I'm kind of like, wow, how do you control it very well? Um, I know some people use an overhand grip and that's fine. Um, uh, some of them use like this and some of them take and will stop and use their finger to wrap and I'm like, why are you doing all the wasted motions? Um, but then it's whatever you are comfortable with and whatever you learned. So um, this is how I learned. So I am going to take and go um, not in the first chain, but this second chain here from the hook. And we don't count this one here. And I'm doing a half double crochet. So I'm going to, and this is how I, Get my yarn I go under and wrap it around and then I go through if you notice this V here I go under that and a lot some people will take and go through the bump in the back I don't I go under the bump and under that top so I actually have two loops on top Uh, loop over, draw through, so I have three on there. Go around and draw through three. And that's what I'm going to do again. So I have only one loop left here on the bottom. That's how I've always done it. So again, I loop over go on in 
through that V, making sure I have that top loop in the back bump, loop over, draw through, loop over, draw through all three. Um, so I'm doing half double crochets. Now you could do this with singles if you want, and it would take longer to complete. Um, I have found in doing these hot pads and hot mats that a double crochet is just too tall, whereas a single crochet is just not tall enough. So the half double crochet uh, works very well. Whoops. And the thing with the Premier, well, with pretty much all cotton, you got to watch for splitting. So again, wrap my yarn, go through the chain, making sure I'm under that back bump, and go across. I had someone comment that they wanted to watch me crochet the whole row. They wanted to watch me crochet the whole thing. I'm like, do you realize how long that would take? <laughs> that would take forever. Another thing when I start with these mats, especially if I'm using two colors, I decide which one is the main color. Um, so this tan, I think it's tan, it's called beige tan beige whatever you want to call it um, is my primary color so you can see here how I have the two loops there so I always have two loops on top when I go through my chain and again, it's all about preference um, because the bottom of this is going to be, there's not really, there's not going to be a bottom. And once I get, every now and then you have one chain that just doesn't want to cooperate. You gotta make it cooperate. I'm almost done here. Now, gauge is not important in this. Um, if you want to use a G hook, your stitches will be a little tighter. If you want to use an I hook, they'll be a little looser. I've just found working with this um, cotton yarn um, for most of the things I make. Well, especially the hot pads, hot mats. Um, dishcloths and that, um, a H, were, H is kind of right in the middle and it works fairly good, um, especially when you have a set of hooks where, you know, they're all the same and if you go up one it's like half a millimeter bigger or down one it's half a millimeter smaller, you know, you just kind of, okay. So that for me to do this project, um, especially with these boil hooks, which I really like, I like the thicker handle on them nowadays. But don't get me wrong, I do have some of the other ones. Now, something I'm going to do is chain one at the end, and I'm going to pull up a loop. Normally I would have a stitch holder, but I don't have one with me. So, but a stitch holder works really well. Now, so I have my first row done. And that, and I said I would show you the bottom. This is the bottom of this one, as you can see. It's rounded. It doesn't look any different or anything. And you notice my ends are hidden. I'll show you that too. Um... If you look, also another thing is, if you look, there is like a channel in each of these rows. So 
So, I mean, you can see I'm sticking my hook down there. Um, I don't want to, well, but yeah, you, you can stick and see that, you know, that there's a channel here, um, which helps. So, because of the stitch I'm using. Now, to start my second color on my end, of course I would hide it from myself. There it is. Okay. Make sure I don't have a knot. This is how I start my second color. You can use whatever method you want. So I take my first row here. And a lot of times when you see people doing this, they start at the same end. I don't. Um, and there's a reason for it, and you'll see it when um, we get a couple rows done. Um, I am going to start here at my very first stitch. Not in the in the in this chain one, but I'm going to start again in the second chain. And what I'm going to do is... Yes, I am actually flipping it so that the bottom is face up. As you can see, there's that single chain right there. I am inserting my hook like that. I'm going to take my second color. I'm going to leave oh, a couple inches. I'm going to bring it through. I'm going to pick up my thread. I'm going to do a chain one, does not count. I'm going to do another chain one. Now, if you notice with this first chain one, I pulled it tight because that's locking it in. This first chain one is just to give us some height. And then in that same chain, in that same stitch, I'm going, I'm going through it again. I have my tail laying over the hook. I'm going to catch a loop, draw it up, do my half double crochet. So again, I'm going to go to the next stitch, making sure my tail is over, draw through a loop, finish my stitch. So I am locking in my tail and high knit so I don't have to do it later and you can tell where each stitch goes because you're just looking for that next stitch there as you can look here you can see I'm trying to hold this up close you can see my next stitch will go there then one there one there um, the only time it's hard to find when you when you do something on the bottom where when it's hard the finest when you're using a fuzzy yarn. Again, you got to watch for splitting. So if it splits, take your hook back out. Make sure you catch them all. There we go. And this is how I continue all the way down the row, making sure that tail, if you notice I'm kind of holding that tail because I'm holding my piece with my thumb on my forefinger, that tail is kind of resting, so it's laying over my forefinger so that I can make sure that I catch it. If you don't want to hide your tail this way and you want to take and just leave it out, you can. Um, some people use it as a way to tell which side they're on. Um, I don't. I prefer to hide it this way. I do it for about well, however many I feel like. I think that's plenty for now. So once I get done with that or I can keep on hiding it, um, I just noticed. Now if you look, you can see that I didn't catch that whole strand of cotton there. Um, the stitch split. And that's 
part of the uh, thing with cotton thread is that it will split. Um, depend upon how it's spun. Some will split worse than others. Um, now it could be this beige is the only one I have issues with out of both of these with splitting. I may not have an issue with the other one. It looks like I'm not so it depends upon the color. It depends upon um, what day it was manufactured, um, you know, when they were doing the the spinning of the different strands, it, maybe the sheen, machine was just that um, slightest bit off so that it didn't spin as tight. So now I got that and I'm looking over here. Okay. Do about five more stitches and then guess what? I'm going to hide my other tail. <laughs> it's easier to hide your tails now because they're actually going to be encased in this and then I only end up with one tail total. Now I will be honest, the first getting this set up to do the double sided is probably the hardest part because once you get it set up in that it's it's not as tedious. Um, you don't have to fight so much. Um, so now I've got this tail coming from the other side and I'm going to Use my thumb and forefinger to kind of hold it. Okay, it's not going to make that stitch. It will definitely make the next stitch. So I'll make sure it's laying on top of my hook so that I can catch it in the stitch. And I'll do it one more time and then I'll show you a little trick. Because as you notice, it's kind of loose there. I will take and find that tail if I can. There it is. I will find the end of the tail and just pull it a little tight to make sure I can find it before I totally close this up. But that way it will lay right on top of my stitches and I don't have to worry about it dropping. Okay, two more. But like I said, once we get this row set up, um, or th this bottom set up, um, the rest of it's fairly simple. Make sure you don't miss your last stitch. There we go. And I'll give that end just a little tug. All right. Now, so I have the beginning. I have my bottom done. So what I'm going to do, this is one reason why I do it in on different ends. Okay, I'm going to turn this so it's like this. So I have my ends peeking out. I've, so I've got the color I just added on top, my base color on the bottom. I'm going to take them and hold them, fold them up together with my second, my back color, we'll call it our back color. We'll call the beige the front color and the ombre the back color. So this uh, back color, which is called rosy cheeks, <laughs> is going to be in the back. Now you would think, okay, 
you're going to take and work using your um, front color. No, nope. that still sits off to the side. And if you notice, I took and I moved it so that it was it's over. When you're working with balls, sometimes it's nice to keep one to your left and one to your right. I'm going to take this rosy cheeks again. I'm going to make sure I have a chain one. And if you notice, when I end up my beige, I did a chain one. Um, that's to help me here. Because I am going to take and yarn over. I am going to go into the very first. Now, okay, let's back up a little bit. You see how we have these nice little V's here? Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to yarn over and we're going to insert into the top of that V so that we have this back loop. So on top of the V, the back loop of our front color, but we're going to go under both loops of our back color. So if you want to take and count loops, when your hook is in this position, you'll have five. Then we're going to take and loop over, pull through the first three, and then pull through three. Okay, so the back loop of our front color under both parts of that V of our back color, loop over, pull through three, pull through three. So basically all we're doing, we're still doing the half double crochet, the only different Rather than doing just under these two or just through the back loop, we're going through the back loop of the front one and under both of them, under that V for the back one. And I'll show you why it's important just to go through that back loop here in a minute. Once you get that base row down, um, it's not that hard to do. See, you can tuck your ends in. And if you do it right, your stitches will all match up. If you notice, my stitches are matching up. And that's how you know if you missed a stitch, <laughs> um, is if your stitches don't end up matching up at the end. That's why I always, I kind of look to see if they match up as I'm going along, because then I don't have to take out a whole row. I might only have to take out half a row. Um, you can usually tell right away if they're not going to match up. Oh, I spoke too highly of that rosy cheeks. It's doing a little splitting. That's okay. I'm just tucking in like that. Like I said, I'm going through that back loop and under both, under that entire V. Now, like I said, some people start both their colors at the same end, and that is fine um, if you want to do it that way. But I do it where I start them at opposite ends, and you'll see why here in a minute. You see I'm almost done and I keep holding this up, folding this up. So I'm folding these two together. 
and that's why we get that little um, opening in the row. Now, when you get to the end, you got to make sure that you've got just the stitch itself, the stitches themselves, and you may want to count to make sure that you have the number of stitches you want. Now, I'm going to pull that loop up. Well, first off, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to chain one. Okay. I'm going to pull that loop up so it's kind of big. Now, I want you to look here. Now, I did, when I folded this up, you're going, but wait a minute. You're folding the back end. Yes, I am. I'm folding it so it is front together when you consider the front sides because when you look at these stitches you can see this is my would normally be my right side and this is my wrong side so basically what I did was my right sides are always together in this um, and for this stitch or for this type of um, project right side wrong side it really doesn't matter it looks the same I mean if you want it to be picky um, and you want it to have it right sides together then you really need to start your um, ends on the same side but because I start my ends at opposite ends it looks more like I have the right sides out now if you also notice if you look here I have these here and that's going to help me when I start my next row so I'm going to pick up my front color I already have my chain one done this is why working with bowls <laughs> you can switch them from side to side so I have my chain one and now what I'm going to do is skipping that chain one I'm going to go under that first V like that drop a loop complete my half double crochet again I'm going under the V to complete my stitch And don't worry, it will it will start coming more together as you go up. Um, your first few rows, it seems really strange. And as you notice, as I'm crocheting, I'm, a, I'm actually holding my thumb or my forefinger here on the top of it. And my thumb is kind of like right here up on the back so that when I come up, I have to look at something. Okay. Um, so when I place my hook, I'm actually going right over the top of my forefinger for right now. And I do this all the way across. Oops, got a knot. Don't sweat the knots. Sometimes if you look at them close enough, pull off. And always make sure you have some yarn pull out. Um, it helps with your uh, keeping your tension even. And I've been told I have pretty good tension. because I can do a swatch and it'll end up right on using the same hook and uh, same weight yarn. I have very little issue meeting um, meeting whatever the um, 
gauges. I'm almost done here. And as you can see, this last one is going to be a little tricky. So let me do the, the these two. And your last one is always going to be tricky because you got to kind of look for it. It's right there, but that's because that's where that's the end of the row. So all I do is work my hook under it under the stitch, making sure I get under that B. And sometimes you got to take and just give it a little tug in order for it to um, loosen up a little bit. Um, your last one may be your tight, tightest one. Okay, so I've got that. Now, I'm going to turn my work again so that my back cover color is facing me and my front color is in the back. Now, something to note is if you have to stop and you don't have um, a loop at one end, both your loops end up at the same end. If you turn them using the method I do it by your back one is always going to be the one you need to work with and this is going to be the channel that gets enclosed here as you can see but if when you think about it if you know you, you set your piece down right um, and if you're using a stitch marker that helps too <laughs> Because whichever one has the stitch marker and is in the front, when you have, if you're right-handed, of course, if you're left-handed, it'll be the opposite way. Um, but it, if you're right-handed like me, um, I can crochet very slowly left-handed, by the way. Um, wherever you're, you're, that's always going to be your front one. That's the one you're not working on. You're always going to work on this on the back one. Um, whichever one is in the back. So right now our front color is in the back. And again, I'm going to take and I did my chain one. I'm going to go in that back loop under that what what it what we're calling our back color and under the V for what we are calling our front color color like that. So right now our back color is in the front and we're going under the back loop and our front color is in the front or in the back and we're going under both. And as you can see, as so long as you have the same number of stitches in both your front and your back, they will line up. And as you can see, now that I have a couple rows going, that they just kind of fall together. Another thing you can note is when you're looking at this and you hold them up, you notice your back row is just a little taller than your front row. That's how you also know that that's um, the color you need to continue working with. Because you're always doing two rows of each color. Um, the first pass is to build up the stitch so it's not quite the same height but close to of your previous row. And then the second row is basically to join them together. And yes, this will curve um, when you're starting out, but don't worry, it will straighten out.
And again, we got to be careful when you get to your ends. When I have missed stitches, it's usually because I missed the end. Now, also when you're looking at your ends, you know, that back loop will kind of hide. So you want to make sure you get the back loop because you want that V. Okay. There we go. Because you want to have that V. It's not very pronounced back here, right there, but it's it's right there. That's where that V is for that last stitch. Okay. So now I'm going to drop that. Look, my other color is right in right in. Um, place for me to start working with it. So again, I'll pick up what we're calling the back color. You can see. So basically, the first time I go across, I'm just creating another row here. And when I come back, I'm just joining those two rows together. Now, let's see how wide this turned out. Um, About eight and a quarter, probably be eight and a half inches. Um, and compare it to this one. Yeah, it's about an inch short. Um, and that, so that's what you do until it is the height that you want it. Um, so I got that one started now. Let's talk about finishing. Now, as you can see on this one, I have both my colors to the same side because I'm going to end it. But as if you look, you can see this back, this pink variegated one, this one here, which is my main color, um, is just a little taller than this color, the pink and white. And that's because I'm going to end this. And the way I end it, because this is such a heavy mat, and that you don't have to put the loop in if you don't want to, but I like putting the loop in. So what I do is I put both colors on my hook, just like this. And I'm going to do them both together. I'm going to crochet them both together. And I do a chain of 10. nine ten for one thing this is a little stronger of a loop whereas when I do my hot pads I only use the one strand okay now to finish this off all I'm going to do is slip stitch now if you look I am going to go under all four I'm not going through the back loop in the top of it. I'm going under all four. So I have both V's on top of my hook. And I will just go through. This can be a little tricky. If you want to use a slightly larger hook, you can. And I will slip stitch. So again, we've got that side V and a top V. I am going to go under the top V of both of them, draw a loop through, draw a loop through, and just slip stitch all the way across. Gives the top a nice little finish. And if you worry about the bottom matching, you can go through and do a slip stitch down there too, but I don't worry about that. <laughs> um, and when you're doing that back V, you want to make sure that you don't catch this. Um, you just want to go under the V. That's all you want is the V is under the top V. And 
I took that out because I grabbed this side here and I don't want that side. I want under the top piece. So this is what I do all the way across. Now, depend upon how fast you crochet, how many interruptions you get, um, how many breaks you take. Um, I would say one of these, mm, four to five hours, maybe six. Again, I like I said, it depends upon how fast you crochet. Um, how many breaks or interruptions you get. But I know there's been a couple times when I've made a couple of these and I was just in the zone <laughs> and it took me about three, three and a half hours. But then the yarn was cooperating. Uh, <laughs> that's another factor is, is your yarn cooperating? Okay, now I gotta make sure I get under that last V top there and the last V for this one for my back. Pull it through and then I finish off. And I will leave a pretty good tail in that. And you can either um, weave these together or weave them separately. It's up to you. But there is my hot mat. So there's the top of it. As you can see, that's what the top looks like. And that's what the bottom looks like. And then, of course, again, like I said, on the sides, um, because of the stitch, you have these channels here. Um, if you're worried about them, you can do a decorative border down it. But to be honest, I don't think there's any need to. Um, because the, the sides look pretty good, I think. So that is my version of, uh, some people call this the thermal stitch. Um, it could, it could be a thermal stitch. Um, I just call it a, how to crochet a two colored piece, <laughs> how to crochet a two color thick piece <laughs> which is basically what you're doing because like I said this is almost three-eighths of an inch thick and compared to my hot pad here you can see it's about an eighth of an inch thicker than my hot pad and my hot pads are all, are thick too because you know they're a quarter of an inch and that and this is like I said this is a rope stitch I'll Make sure I have an up-to-date video on that. So, um, and this is all I have left. Four ounces of cotton thread. I can probably get a washcloth out of that. Maybe. Or at least a couple of face scrubbies. Um, so that's my video for today. Hope you enjoyed it. Any questions, let me know. Thanks for watching. Bye.